Um, just recapping last week's uh, game and just uh, really uh, proud of the players. Uh, thankful for uh, all of their effort and leadership, their toughness, the willingness to continue to work and uh, develop, get better, have the right kind of mindset. Love the, the attitude going into, into that game. Uh, guys were fearless. Uh, they were prepared. I thought we played confidently and aggressively. I thought the staff did a, a fantastic job on both sides of the ball, just having the guys ready to compete. Um, loved, if you loved anything, the physicality and just the overall execution, both you know, offense, defense, and in the kicking game. And uh, just love the improvement. You know, there's, you know, we challenged everybody just, hey, man, what's the one thing that I can get a little bit better at? If I get a little bit better, you know, and you add all of that up, you know, on the team throughout the locker room, you know, to to make the kind of improvement that we want. And uh, so I've really been able to see that, obviously, offensively the last four weeks. And then, you know, defensively, uh, you know, I've seen this, this team uh, develop a really a strong identity and, uh, and, and consistent improvement and uh, being challenged different ways. As we know, we're, I think we're the only team in college football that's played uh, seven teams that are in the current top 25 this week. And uh, so we've had an incredibly uh, challenging uh, schedule. And, uh, but uh, some things that our, our guys have been able to accomplish over the last month have been, uh, have been really uh, noticeable. Um, we've only given up four sacks. Uh, if you were looking just for improvement, um, you know, we've given up four sacks you know, over our last uh, three games. So that's an uh, improvement. Uh, and, you know, I think our first seven games, we were averaging around 112 yards a game rushing. And again, our last four games were averaging 227 yards uh, a game. So a really a great job, uh, continue to improve that way. Uh, I think it aligns with, you know, having the, the same offensive line, uh, you know, several weeks in a row uh, certainly helps that. And, um, you know, We've uh, improved our, uh, you know, our rush defense this year. We talked about that a week ago, and we continue to do that. And again, we're going against some good teams that know how to run the football, and so that's been, uh, you know, something that is really good to see uh, as well. And um, and uh, and then I think uh, our scoring defense. Um, we've we've played five teams that are in the top 17. Uh, on offense, and you know, we've been able to hold, the, hold those teams below their their averages, and just proud of the defense. They've, they've showed up week in and week out, and given us a chance to win uh, every game. And coming out of the game, I think last week, if there was something, because we've been talking about that in front of our team a lot, but if if we take care of the ball and uh, you know do some basic, simple things that winning uh, requires. Uh, there's not a team that we can't compete with and not a team that we can't beat on our schedule. And we've shown that. Um, we, you know, several of our losses, we either didn't win the turnover battle on all, all five of them, uh, or we just couldn't sustain drives and for lots of different reasons. And, and so we've been able to put together a little more consistency that way. And, and, uh, and we got into a fantastic rhythm, you know, on both sides of the ball, and and we're able to overcome some some uh, early uh, miscues uh, in this game and some other games against good people. We haven't been able to overcome those things, so I think that's a sign of maturation and and uh, uh, improvement. And uh, so, and we're doing it with a lot of, as we we talked about a week ago, a lot of youth as well, and that's exciting uh, to know what you know the future holds from that standpoint. Uh, got a great opponent in uh, LSU. I think they've uh, they've won maybe 21 of their last 22 uh, home night games, and have been fantastic. Uh, and a really talented football team uh, that I think lead leads the SEC in uh, least amount of sacks uh, given up. And uh, have you know some fantastic wide receivers, maybe the league's best tight end, and uh, really just a. a, a you know, Garrett Nussmeyer is a fantastic player. I think they have seven games where he's thrown for 300 plus yards and two games where he's thrown for 400 plus yards. Uh, so going to be a different type of challenge uh, this week. Uh, Brian Kelly is a, a proven winner. Uh, it's a very well coached football team. They're a really aggressive defense. They've recruited really well uh, over the last several years there. Um, 
I think they're second in the SEC in time of possession. They've had excellent game control, and uh, you know they've lost to some really good teams, and then lost to Florida in a game they dominated uh, from a, a game control standpoint. Uh, I think they they had 90 plus plays in that game offensively, and Florida only had 52, 53 plays total in the game. But uh, I think Florida beat them in the big play uh, category, which was. Uh, huge. It was, and then and then uh, LSU got into into the red zone several times and came away with uh, no points and uh, recipe for you know for losing. And uh, as we know, but a team that uh, uh, leads the SEC, one of the best in in college football. I think fifth nationally on third downs offensively. Uh, they're averaging uh, fifty percent conversion rate on third down, which is just outstanding. So. Uh, that's one of the game control things, and uh, they've been able to stay on schedule, uh, both running and throwing. And uh, so, going to be a great, great challenge uh, on Saturday night. But something our our players are really looking forward to. We're starting to see some of the national media label your defense as an elite defense. In your eyes, do you have an elite defense, or how close are you to being an elite defense? I mean, <clears throat> haven't looked at uh, all of the. Defensive numbers. I know we've been challenged. Uh, I'm very careful to use that word. That was an elite performance, uh, and a just true serum. You know, we got a we got a win on third and sixteen. You know, two weeks ago, and uh, that's to take nothing away uh, from where we're at, what we've accomplished, and what we're capable of. I believe in these guys. I wouldn't trade them for anybody. I love how they're playing. I love how they prepare. I love uh, the passion, the leadership, the physical toughness, the mental toughness, the humility. I can I can brag on these guys for a long time. And uh, let's see what the season's body of work looks like. And uh, that's what I would say. Uh, they're not going to be without fault. They're not going to make every play. They're not going to make every stop uh, in order to be an elite defense. But they've done a lot of things that you would associate you know, uh, with an elite defense. They have done that. I love the improvement that I've seen them have this season. I've had plenty of seasons uh, where we didn't get better. Um, And you hate that. And um, this is a season that these guys have continued to come to work in a really tough, challenging. You guys have probably written stories about it. I know you've asked me questions about it. Well, how do you, how's the defense not point fingers? How do they, not give up on the other side of the ball or, you know, how do they stay motivated? And for me, it's easy. And we focus on our standards. We focus on things that we can control, you know. Uh, you know, Zion Kearney or Jackson Arnold or Bauer Sharp, they're not going to sack the quarterback. They're not going to stop anybody in the A-gap. They're not going to play the post. Uh, they're not going to stay in the half field. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, we need to focus on things that we can control. and. But I've been really proud and thankful. I love the maturation. I love the youth that's adding with the veterans. Our, our, our best players and our oldest guys are playing their best football. And that's really cool to see. And they, they, they show up every day with great pride and uh, great respect for how we do what we do. And, and I love how they're, they're pouring into their teammates on the other side of the ball too, supporting them, encouraging them, challenging each other every day. Uh, the offense has had plenty of success against the defense at practice and our good on good stuff. And, and uh, man, there's a mutual respect. And uh, I love how they're challenging each other every day to get better. So they have a lot of the characteristics that, again, you would associate, again, with, a, with an elite group. Um, I think their performance and the improvement from where we ended last year to where we're at right now, man, uh, there's a lot to be, uh, to, you know, salute to and uh, to give them props for. Um, but we've got a couple more games, and, and uh, you know, I don't want them to be satisfied by any way. Last week was last week. Got to start over yesterday. And uh, certainly uh, look at what we did well and try to build on that momentum and uh, find things that we didn't do well and get better and know that this week is going to pre- present a completely different challenge and requires a completely different mindset. Some things are the same. 
uh, just in regards to our preparation. But going on the road is a real thing. Winning the SEC is incredibly difficult. Winning in Baton Rouge is a whole nother uh, challenge. But external factors don't win for you. Uh, but it's going to be hostile, and, and uh, our players are going to have to embrace the, the chaos of game day on the road and, and have a great, you know, focused intensity and passion. And, uh, you know, uh, execution is what wins for you. Taking care of the ball is what wins for you. Being physical and playing with great effort are the things that, that win for you. And the defense is going to have to, you know, more than do their part uh, to give us a chance, you know, on Saturday night. Mm hmm yeah, Brent, you talk about that hostile environment. Uh, it, it, what's the toughest place you've ever uh, coached in during your career? And just how big of a, a factor can that be to play in a place like that, you know, like out here for, for y'all, things like that? I would, there's probably a, just a handful of, of some places that they're all kind of like grouped in there, but. Uh, Playing in New Orleans against LSU twice for the national championship in 19 and 04 uh, are the, the probably the first two on that on that list, um, and I mean that uh, sincere. Uh, it was uh, deafening; could not hear on the headsets, and uh, so those are two of the places in that state against that team. Uh, two tough, challenging environments, and that's what we'll probably experience. You know, one like true road environments. I know, obviously, that is a really a true road environment. But yeah, I mean, uh, again, uh, A and M is uh, on the road and really good game. Uh, uh, been at Georgia was a a, a great environment. Um, at Florida State, and uh, they had when they had some really good teams. There were uh, really uh, challenging. Uh, South Carolina uh, when. Uh, and when Coach Spurrier was there, they had some really good teams, and that's going to play. Uh, Clemson is going to bring out the very best in the fan base there in Columbia. Uh, those are some things that are some places that uh, come to mind right away. Kansas State uh, in, in 2000, that was deafening uh, when uh, they blocked a, a punt, and Teddy Lamy gave up that punt, uh, let the guy run right by him, Drew Thalman, and buried it, and Terrence Newman scooped it for a touchdown. You know, yeah, not that we haven't moved on from that, but uh, <laughs> that was that was uh, uh, electric. You know, that night, Cotton Bowl. Uh, that we certainly have experienced some great uh, settings in that in that environment as well. Yep. Yeah, uh, Brent, you've uh, you've clearly rebuilt the defense from where it was before you got here. You're on trying to work on the offense now. Mm -hmm. Clearly, is it easier to to build up an offense and create the kind of offense you want than it is to create the kind of defense you want? Wow, that's a great question. Um, my first answer um, would be yes. Uh, that's my inclination. Only, uh, you know, I use this reference that with this defense that for a decade wasn't very good and everything that comes with that mindset um, culture, uh, roster, the things that uh, you had to tear down and, and start over with there, uh, cr developing you know, the confidence and what that vision looks like was a really challenging thing. Uh, having perspective and knowing what excellence looks like, and, but also being able to affirm improvement, <laughs> which I'm not very good at. Uh, yeah, but we still stink uh, was what I wanted to say. But you you can't you don't want to you want to be you're dealing with a fragile group a few years ago and how hard they were working. That part was easy to affirm them uh, to hey man you guys are doing the right things. We're just we weren't very good. Um, I think uh, you know being right at the right positions, you know having good play at the right positions offensively, uh, you can build around and maybe have success uh, quicker. And, uh, you know, to build on the, you know, play off of the strengths that, you know, we had. But uh, none of it's easy, but I, I do think, I think that's fair to say. And I think that we've shown when we don't take care, or when we don't take care of the ball, uh, it doesn't look very good. But when we have taken care of it with a, a young, inexperienced, injured group of guys, 
you know, we can we can still win games. We we've got to be good in in the right spots around them. You know, kicking game, a field position, defense, and so we've proven that. And with a uh, the continued development, I think we've seen that. Uh, again, we can have that type of performance. I don't assume that's going to happen week in and week out if we just take care of the ball, but we showed against a really good team that's playing as good as anybody in the country what we can do when we put it all together and play a little uh, cleaner uh, on offense. Um, and uh, so I think, I think that's fair to say, uh, Barry, uh, to answer your question. offensive coordinator search a lot of people want to say oh you need a, an air raid offense or a spread offense maybe more pro style you're seeing that more in college football these days do you have a preference on on a scheme or is there a scheme that you feel like in this league specifically you're seeing more success with because it feels like there's a lot of different offenses offenses that you could go to yeah it's one that's um, e efficient that's going to attract great players that has a reputation uh, and a scheme-friendly system that's going to attract you know great quarterbacks and skill guys, you know uh, running backs, tight ends, receivers. Uh, you know that's I think really important. What what how can we win? Uh, what style of offense that we can win in this league? Uh, so you look at the styles through the years um, that have been successful, and we've seen them all. Uh, something that you know that can transition quickly with the roster that we have. And again, we do know that you can quickly change a, a, a roster, uh, you know, through the current systems that uh, that we have in college football. Um, but something that gives you the, the right kind of balance, uh, run, pass, efficiency, ball control, explosiveness, um, quarterback friendly. You know, to me, you look at, you know, systematically something that, that you don't have to have a generational five-star best quarterback in the portal every year to have a really successful, efficient uh, offense that, that gives us a chance to win our conference, uh, compete at the highest level, to be a, an offense that can uh, do its part to help us get to the playoffs and win. And uh, uh, so I don't mind having a generational five-star best guy in the country at quarterback, but something that maybe people have proven, uh, have a some type of a track record that shows that, man, we lose that guy. This is an offense that still produces and puts stress on a defense and scores points, moves the ball. Um, yardage may or may not be important. Again, I, we, we look at the things I just said. E efficiency in all the right spots, good in the red zone, good on third, fourth down, has good ball control. Uh, you know, can make the explosive plays, uh, can win games, um, do the things that's necessary to win games. But I like an offense that has some flexibility and win different ways. And so if that looks like uh, five wides and that looks like ninja, if that looks like eye backs, if that looks like 13 and 14 personnel, if that looks like 12 personnel, uh, you know, uh, all things are certainly under consideration. But again, I look at what, what does it take to, to win and compete in our league? Uh, you know, the, against the best teams. With the way you guys won on Saturday, able to run the ball, chew the clock, did that change your perspective at all, or was that just a um, one-off? I, I think that's a great way to win. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, I, I don't think that that oh that isn't been in alignment with what we wanted before. I think I think this staff has done a really good job the last month of you know taking um, kind of a messy situation um, for all the right reasons, not just. Okay, Coach Venables um, made a mistake, uh, if you will, and I hired the wrong, uh, the wrong guy. It, it obviously wasn't the right guy. And I don't want to. It's not centered on 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 Seth. I just I didn't. I I, I, I failed, and uh, that's and I own that. You know, I'm not. That's not uh, earth shattering news. Okay, now I got it. What I got to do to fix it? And so, what do we have to do as a staff now? And I thought. I think this staff has done a really good job of trying to figure that out, get better every week, put together a great game plan, but also figure out, okay, what does this group of guys, what is this uh, team, what can we do? And you know, what do we need to do this week? Because what we need to do this week might look a little different than what we need to do or what we could do a week ago. That's the facts. That's just week in and week out. It's all maybe a little bit different. And But I really, uh, and again, what they were able to do and keep Alabama uh, off balance and the efficiency, the physicality, the precision, uh, the discipline that we played with uh, on offense and how that aligned with what we were doing, you know, on defense. Uh, 
that's certainly what you want it at the, the end result is what you want it to look like. And you can do that lots of different ways. You can throw the ball efficient, efficiently and then run it when you need to. Uh, we ran the ball really efficiently and then we threw it when we needed to. And, but we stayed on schedule. At the end of the day, stayed on schedule. Now, we do know there's different ways that you can do that. And again, you want to uh, play to your player's strengths and maybe what this week's game plan can present based on who you're playing to. And I think that's the, the art of what, you know, uh, having a system that's adjustable, flexible, adaptable, uh, you know, a week in and week out. But, you know, also has an identity, you know, toughness, physicality. You got to be able to run the ball at, at every level of football, uh, but you do have to throw it. You can't just do one thing. And uh, but we need to be efficient. And then, like I mentioned, you know, LSU, you know, they're they're at fifty percent conversion rate on third and fourth downs. You're doing a lot of great things. You probably obviously have um, a great play design and a good catalog on third and fourth down. Uh, but you also probably have done a good job of staying on schedule to to give yourself an efficient opportunity there, uh, where your back's not against the wall and uh, where you make it hard on people in those situations uh, as well. Yep. You touched on Dust Meyer in your opening statement. It, he's an interesting guy in college football. He's a veteran, maybe didn't have the mass number of starts coming into this year, but, but what have you kind of seen as you study him as his growth to continue to get yeah. LSU? Yeah, I look back all the way to uh, you know what we studied in the out of season and, and uh, you know, watching him in the bowl game against Wisconsin and where, and he did, you know, did a nice job in that game. Uh, but what they're doing with him now is different. They've, he's taken a next step. You can see the trust that they have in him, and they're playing to what this team has developed into. You know, uh, you know, Kyron Lacey and uh, Aaron Anderson. Uh, you know, they've really uh, stepped up. Uh, offensive line has been what they thought it would be and hoped it would be from a veteran group that is very talented. That again, leading the SEC and the least amount of sacks given up and one of the best in college football on third and fourth down, being a really efficient group of guys. And uh, But they've, um, because of his development and improvement, uh, Garrett I'm talking about, uh, and the group of players that he has around him, you know, from their, uh, you know, Mason Taylor at tight end and their, their receivers uh, have some young backs. But, uh, uh, you know, you really have seen him. He's completing 63% uh, of his passes. and. Uh, two to one touchdown to interception, you know, ratio, and he moves around really well. Uh, so they're taking advantage of that. They boot him, they they roll him out, they dash him, uh, they sprint him, and, and and so he can do a great job keeping his eyes down the field and throws the ball really really well on the move. And so you're seeing a guy that, and I love his toughness. He's got he plays with uh, really uh, everything goes through him. He's had a a, a really good year. Mm -hmm. Brent, Eli Bowen's off to a great start in his career, and he's not your prototype, and, and that he's not six one or something like that. But he's so really good with what he does. You've often said if your corners can handle the island, your rest of your defense could really come along. I'm curious if you feel like you're closer, because this Saturday LSU will try to go vertical a bunch, and talk about that matchup within the matchup there. Yeah, Eli has uh, played really well, and. He's he's passed all the tests, uh, if you will, uh, thus far, and we've we've bragged on him a lot. Uh, I know, so I don't want to be too redundant, but he uh, he probably is more of the prototype, to believe it or not. Um, you look at the NFL; uh, most of them, the average is under six feet. And shoot, who wouldn't want you know uh, big, long creatures outside that can cover really well? But for whatever reason. Uh, uh, the the averages are under six foot in the NFL the best the best ones and that's not to say there aren't some great ones that are really big and we'll take them out whatever size they come in and I'll be I'm just very honest but he plays big as we have talked about but he's just a very patient player he's got he's a very skilled player um, he understands the game within the game he he understands situational football uh, a lot of young guys a lot of old guys they they lose themselves they forgot that last down was second and ten, and it was an incomplete. Now it's third and ten, and you know they want to they want to press, uh, you know, like it's third and three, and, and it's third and ten. So maybe you want to give a little cushion and make the quarterback hold the ball a little longer, you know, because the route, you know, detail is going to be a little bit longer. So you don't want to get if you get beat early, it's it's a wrap. And so he has a lot of maturity from a situational standpoint, knowing uh, when you get into the red zone how to play 
coverage is different than when you're, you know, the offense is coming off their own goal line. And uh, just so we've we've bragged on that part. That to me is is a piece that helps separate him from a lot of young players. His ability to take what you do in practice and take it to the game game day uh, and the situational, how that affects your coverage and things of that nature. But uh, he's got good natural instincts and a really good natural skill set, and was well coached in high school systematically uh, there at Denton Geyer. Uh, he, you know, so he came in prepared. Uh, the system that he was exposed to in high school and the level of play helped him transition uh, rather quickly. Yeah, I mean, again, they're they're a challenge, uh, no matter how you look at it. And uh, but uh, we've got a lot of confidence in Eli and what he can do, and and his development has really helped us focus on. Not that he, we don't focus with him; he's he gets as much coaching as anybody every day. But it has really helped our defense grow you know, and focus on maybe the other corner spot or maybe other parts of your defense that need a little more, uh, you know, love and tenderness. And uh, because of his consistency, uh, I don't want to take that for granted, but uh, that's really helped our defense take another step. Yeah, Brent, for the last month we've asked, how have you kept the 2025 recruiting class together? Mm -hmm. So now we'll flip it after a night like Saturday. What's been the, re the recruiting jolt you've had since that moment and how important to have that type of performance with recruits here in Norman and the ones who are watching on TV? Well, again, I would be naive if I acted like it didn't have a, a positive effect. Uh, you know, I don't know what the odometer on that says, but other than, you know, I'm, I've been doing this a long time, so I know uh, certainly uh, when to play off of that and when to – uh, see what I've been saying? Uh, I, not that um, – just affirmation, hey, we're getting better. Um, there's a lot to, to be excited about in the, the future. And if we put it all together and Oklahoma doesn't beat Oklahoma, this is what we're capable of. And this is uh, an opportunity to say that's what we – didn't we just say that a week ago? Uh, it's the simple, basic things. And so uh, we certainly have tried to promote that and nurture that. I think that's fair. Uh, in this, you know, very difficult space uh, where you're trying to uh, create belief. And, uh, and again, we're, we're not recruiting against uh, just anybody. We're recruiting against really good programs that have a lot to sell. Uh, you know, we're not the only good program. And, uh, but in, a, in an alignment with the University of Oklahoma, in alignment with uh, the SEC conference, in alignment with the development opportunities with this staff, in alignment with a, a really good uh, locker room and culture and a, and a, a great foundation of youth and, uh, and experience with the recruiting classes that we have in front of them. These guys want to know that they're going to be around a lot of other good players so that they can compete at the highest level. So. Um, that's we have a lot to sell that way, and uh, certainly uh, last week's performance is is affirmation for that. Brandon, I wanted to ask you about uh, Xavier Robinson, who's always mm -hmm. obviously played really well the last couple of weeks, but just you know he didn't play a ton t to start the year. So I just wanted to ask, what was his maybe his growth process going through the year, and then has there been any surprise that he's been able to come in late and, and play this well? Yeah, again he's he's in line, and uh, we talked about a little bit last night on our show uh had an okay spring uh i don't want to sound mean and uh but i'm telling you the truth uh you know they, there was a little bit of struggle his, his weight issue and you know, just being consistent knowing what to do uh, his head was spinning a little bit fumbled the ball a lot uh, when he got some opportunities you know you you get limited opportunities as a freshman eli got limited opportunities when he got in there uh he did well and uh, that's how you earn trust and uh, earn opportunity. And, uh, and again, you're coming in a room that was uh, returning some good players. And, uh, and then early in the year, well, I just said that we, we averaged 112 yards. Anybody that got in uh, didn't look great. Uh, but we did get, uh, there were some signs that Javante Barnes was coming back in, in good form. Uh, and Taylor Tatum got in the game early uh, in the year, and he actually looked good. Uh, just we didn't look consistent. And uh, uh, we averaged 112 yards. And, and so, uh, but through uh, some guys getting banged up and uh, a change in 
uh, the coordinator, uh, he did get some opportunity, and when he got in, he did well. And so uh, I, I mentioned uh, Quentin Griffin, you know, and we couldn't tackle him on, you know, right? Nobody uh, recruited Quentin. Not very many people recruited Xavier, not at least really uh, highly thought of schools. Uh, not He wasn't a, a highly, in this state, he was rated maybe the third or fourth best player in the state. Uh, but I think Iowa State was one of his best offers, uh, committable offers. And anyway, Xavier might know more than me but uh, about that. But um, Quentin Griffin came in here as a backup on his high school team. and But we couldn't tackle him on defense in 99. We weren't good at tackling anybody in 99. But uh, we certainly couldn't tackle him. And then it took maybe two or three running backs that got hurt. And finally, Quentin got his opportunity. I know we weren't very good at coaching. Uh, uh, back then either, but uh, then he got over there and, and had a good finish to the year. And then next thing you know, it becomes the, at one time, I think when he finished, he was maybe the fifth all time in, in rushing yards at the history, in the history of Oklahoma football, which is pretty good. You know, we've been good at running back. And uh, but those dumb coaches in the first part of his uh, career didn't know what the hell they were doing. And he was stuck on the scout team. And so we finally got out of our own way because of injuries. And he got in. And sometimes that happens. Uh, but also, he didn't, uh, Xavier didn't have this amazingly smooth start. Uh, Eli Bowen and Jane Jackson, on the other hand, they came in. They knew the playbook. Uh, they, they took great detail, uh, or took to the meetings with great detail, prepared. When they got in, as freshmen in the spring, they did really well. You heard us brag on those guys uh, at that time. Limited uh, amount of you know opportunity, and uh, but that, those opportunities grew because of when they did get their uh, sw small window of opportunity, they really uh, capitalized on that. And Xavier took him a little longer to do that, but uh, thank goodness, right? Um, uh, better late than never. And uh, Demarco uh, finally smartened up and. Uh, uh, um, and I'm just having some fun. Right, give me a break, right? <laughs> I need to be able to do that just a little bit. I, I have, um, uh, trust me, I'm, uh, I ask the same questions. And, uh, uh, but uh, anyway, you know, we're uh, d doing our best right now, but it's great to see him having some success. And, uh, and if, uh, Taylor, if, we t if he takes care of the ball, man, that can be a heck of a tandem. And then Javante comes back and uh, now we get Gavin, Coming back, being healthy uh, off of his uh, his uh, his thigh, um, man, well, that could be a heck of a room. And we've known that all year. We're hopeful and hopeful for that. And uh, but we gotta uh, take care of the ball. We know that. And uh, but we uh, just getting a little bit better. And, and it was great. You know, that's three straight weeks. I think Maine and and that Missouri, and then here against Alabama. Uh, you know, playing his best football as a freshman here at the end of the year. So thankful for. Uh, him sticking with it and continue to come to practice every day and getting better and Coach Murray and the staff giving him an opportunity. So uh, that's been that's been really good to see. Mm -hmm. uh, Brad, you said you wanted to have a little fun, so I wanted to ask you about something that you mentioned on your radio show last I'm night. I'm usually not a, a, a no fun kind of guy, so that's rare for me. What does ninety four dollars get you at Taco Bell? <laughs> Everything that looked good on the menu. So here's what a coach goes through on, on game day, at least me. Uh, I'm a, a, a work out early morning, have a great breakfast, and uh, and then you know maybe have a smoothie or something. Uh, just closer to get to game day, you don't want to take a nap. So by the time I'm done with the radio show on a night game and with the media and with the recruits and with the players and the staff, and uh, you know get in the car and get home, uh, you know I'm ready to you know chew an arm off uh, of somebody. So. Uh, Girls say go to Taco Bell, uh, man, let's go. And uh, it's a long line, but man, it was worth the wait. It had to, it was so long, I had to go inside and go to a bathroom break uh, while we waited for the food. We had to pull over. We ordered so much food, they didn't, they couldn't get it all ready. We ordered everything, and uh, uh, whatever they had put inside of a of a uh, tortilla, the, the crunchy stuff, man, it's freaking, it's really. I have no idea what it was. <laughs> And uh, but we smashed that and uh, had some fun. But uh, but anyway, it's good. It's good. It's worth the wait. Coach, it, it's amazing to me that uh, I think there might have been two completions to wide receivers the other night. Yet you were able to do what you did. 
it seems Dion Burks would be really important if you could get him back. I wondered if you think he will come back now, and also his tragedy <laughs> that he's had to deal with with yeah. the home and, and everything with his situation. Yeah, it's still uh, up in the air, and we'll see where he's at. You know, he had a I think he had a history of concussions uh, at uh, Purdue, and so you know, there's you keep track of all that that you know, history. It's a very delicate thing, and. Uh, but he's as tough as they come. I, I, I bragged on his toughness in the in the winter time and how competitive and tough he's been since he's been here. So uh, battling back and overcoming, he had a, a grade two thigh contusion uh, tear confirmed by an MRI. So he uh, was dealing with that and he came back from that and then uh, uh, was was great. But all of that pales in comparison to what you go through as a family. I've never had that happen. Excuse me to me, but um, you know what they had to deal with, uh, real. Uh, but what they've had to overcome through that, and um, this family's still at a, at a hotel and will be uh, for the foreseeable uh, future. Uh, but he's been great. You know, he he really wants to get back, and uh, he loves his team and has loved his opportunity. I know he loves Coach Jones and believes in. Uh, you know his teammates, but we'll see what the future holds. Uh, both this week and even after that, he's a guy that's going to have to make some decisions. He could get drafted uh, pretty high. Uh, I'm no uh, draft expert, but I know uh, that receivers, a lot of receivers, are taken early uh, in the first uh, several rounds. And uh, he's a guy that uh, he's definitely uh, gonna, has the NFL. And God willing, has he has that in his future uh, immediately. And uh, so we'll see where that all uh, lands. But uh, a lot of good players, and a lot of good players that have a you know you know a history of tape too uh, that they can sell. And uh, certainly he has that a little bit here, and, and certainly at uh, Purdue. But uh, we're there for him to support him and help him. And uh, if he comes back, it's because you know we've dotted all the I's and crossed the T's from a health standpoint. And uh, those those are nothing to the concussions are nothing to to play around with way or another mm -hmm. definitely and then yeah right and then Farouk uh, any chance uh... yeah he had a, a little bit of a setback um, uh, at at Missouri and uh, so uh, x-rays and uh, you know showed a little bit of a setback there so really just kind of unfortunate Jake Roberts is uh, he had a same similar type of injury and he's come back and he's had a great year and uh, so everybody's a little bit different You talked about the OC earlier in the scheme. I wanted to ask you more about um, your thoughts on the person that you want to hire. Less about the scheme, more about the person. Uh, qualities, for instance, uh, what are his work habits? You know, who are his references? Who does he work for? Did he play the position? What's important to you as you start to analyze? <laughs> you just went check, 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 check. You know, <laughs> you certainly want people that they've worked with have good things to say about them. Um, their leadership style. Uh, their energy, uh, what kind of a teammate are they? Uh, their toughness, you know, their ability to recruit, their ability to adapt, um, their humility, you know, things that they value. Um, what all that, you know, maybe again, and it doesn't all have to fit in a nice, tight, tidy box either. But um, maybe what do they play in? in did they play in college? You know, some of the best ones never even played in college. So, uh, again, you, you always have a perspective with all of it. But uh, and then, where have they been? What does the tape say? Uh, have they been able to be successful with with um, with the hand that they've been dealt? Um, so you you look at all of that, and uh, I think it's important that wherever they come from, people have good things to say. You know, hey, oh, and another thing, and uh, and not looking for a, a choir boy, uh, but also we want to, uh, you know, we get to choose, and so we want to uh, find you know someone that aligns with uh, again a belief system and a value system that we share. Um, there's, uh, but at the same time, uh, can we get better through this? They don't have to be. No, but every, everybody has to be just like me, you know, or just like, you know, uh, what we've had in the past. So we've kept an open mind about all of it. And uh, and then trust, you know, there's analytical data uh, that 
and you want it to say something. It tells a story. What does it say? Is there a preference young guy with new ideas versus an older guy with more established credentials? Oh, yeah, I think that um, fit, and I, I think um, older can fit, and I think younger can fit uh, with the things that you just said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, Coach, you know, people have different opinions about playing non-conference games late in the season, but it looks like you made the most of yours. How important was that main game when you ran for 381 yards uh, in helping you reshape your offensive identity? Yeah, I think uh, we, 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 we talked about those things both pre-game without uh, being disrespectful uh, to, to your opponent um, and then certainly bragged on uh, all with, you know, understanding of, the quality of maybe what we're lining up against, but making it more about the precision, the execution, the confidence that the young guys that are most young guys, some are stronger than others, but everybody has some degree of vulnerability and maybe some self-doubt and just developing some confidence and putting something on tape other than practice. Like, man, look, see what you're capable of. Uh, and executing against, again, a well-coached team. Uh, certainly, we, we played off of that in, in all the right ways, like you would expect us to. And so there's a, there's a real place for that. And um, if I go all the way back to, to Bill Schneider, just you know, at, at that time when Coach Schneider got to Oklahoma, if, or got to Kansas State, rather, if I learned something just as a fly in the wall there, um, talked about building belief uh, through success, regardless of who it was against. A program that at one point had the most losses uh, or with a losing this team at a time, certainly had the three or four year window, didn't win a game uh, until they beat North Texas, who at the time was one double A and broke this three or four year streak of not winning a game, but developing confidence through success, regardless of who you're playing and did that, he had you know, one of the worst non-conference. <laughs> and I'm not, uh, that's what we did, and um, uh, beat the brains out of people. Uh, but for a long time, we didn't beat the brains out of people, but we won. And next thing you know, all of those things led credibility, the success led credibility to uh, the process and the mindset and you know the things that that it takes to win and uh, winning in the mind before you ever win on the field. And, and so that development, you know, certainly is great. So if you had a veteran team that was just humming right along and you have that game late, then maybe it allows you to develop the, the backups or that third or that fourth team too. Or maybe it gives them the wind in their sails. Some of the freshmen that were used to being the guy and didn't play a lot during the season. And then late in the year, they get a little shot in the arm by going out there playing 35, 40 snaps and dominating some people. And, and, and then you carry that into the out of season, bowl preparation, winter conditioning, spring ball. And it really can be a, a springboard for, for their growth, development, and maturity. You ended up uh, actually getting out of your car at the Taco Bell and going in. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine what it was like. What was it like interacting with people? Because did people like stop you? I got a few double takes, but I got in and got out. <laughs> So it was good. Yeah, Brent, um, get, given your past, do you have any impassioned takes on which is the real Death Valley between uh, Clemson and LSU? <laughs> yeah. It's, well, let me just look at these stats here. Um, the one that we're going into this week, um, again, 18, uh, 14 and 1 in, in home night games since Coach Kelly's been there in three years. Uh, they're 18 and two overall. 18 and two overall at home. Listen, I've heard from every coach that I love and respect uh, that's been in all the biggest venues, the best of the best, and everybody points to Death Valley, Baton Rouge, night game. Uh, hope that your team doesn't have to be scheduled because uh, that's uh, the toughest challenge there is in college football. So. Um, I know we're going to get uh, the best out of uh, the LSU faithful, and uh, but you know, it's a, it's something that you're really looking forward to uh, as well. Uh, that's you love a challenge, and you know that that's going to be a real thing. But you tell your players, you know, again that you know external factors don't win. You know the you know execution, physicality, effort, do the things that we can control. So, uh, but something that I'm you know looking forward to. Is that title though, Death Valley, something you? 
guys took pride in at, at Clemson? Because I know there's a back and forth. Yeah, the I mean, there's there's history um, both. Uh, I don't, you know, there's a real history that, you know, there's uh, there's a uh, there's a paper trail, if you will. There's a rock trail uh, that it goes back to Death Valley, uh, California, for for Clemson, and it's a. I remember as a kid, didn't know where Clemson was. Hell, when I was an adult, I didn't know. Uh, what town Clemson was in? I'm like, what town is that? And what, you know, you know, Clemson? You know, and you know, what state is that? I didn't even know what state it was in. Uh, I just thought Clemson was a college. I didn't know it was also the town name, and I certainly didn't know. I just knew there was a mystical hill that I thought came out of nowhere. And where'd they come from? Uh, and uh, it seemed like an intimidating thing, and it really is. It's it's a in its own right, uh, incredibly and. Uh, intimidating, loud uh, environment, um, as good as there is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, Stutz was a Butkus finalist, but you got Kip Lewis in his first year really starting. He's shown to be a big time playmaker. What's his ceiling? You've seen a bunch of linebackers. How good can he be? And kind of what's got him to this point? Yeah, uh, Kip is. Um, one of my favorite guys because he's always smiling. He loves to practice. He loves to compete. Uh, he's he's kind of been my uh, juice whisperer, uh, you know. And when I'm mad at the world and uh, feeling sorry for myself, he's he's a guy that always just find he's just got a light inside of him. He's smiling and coach man, I got you. And uh, always at the right time. He's a fantastic player. Great instincts. Plays really big. Uh, just a ball magnet. Uh, you know, he has a very unorthodox way of how to slip blocks and knife in there and, and club guys' feet out from underneath them. And uh, the ceiling is limitless. I feel like Kip has a chance to play the game a long time. He's a three-down linebacker. Um, he's coming into his own if he really commits himself to – uh, the next level of detail and the next level of um, physical development, taking care of his diet and in the out of season and building his body uh, to, uh, you know, have a have a, you know, a body that aligns with, you know, the, the wear and tear that you got to have uh, the ability to endure uh, the course of a season. Man, there's no limits on what he can accomplish. But I think he's the, the next really special one. Uh, we've got a great group. We've been bragging on that group for a couple of years. And uh, he has really uh, flashed uh, the last couple of years. But man, he's a he's a playmaking machine. And uh, one that I'm really proud of him. He's become a great leader and a guy's you know, when we he, he was a captain. And this year did a great job. Uh, uh, really stepped into that role uh, in, in a great way.